Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and recently I took a trip out to the salvage auction with my good friend Richery Builds. We made a video showing you some of the inventory that was there, but what we didn't show you was the best inventory that was there. Stuff that I was personally interested in, wanted to bid on, wanted to take home for myself. And sometimes when we film these videos, it's a few days out before these cars go up for sale. Sometimes they're already sold. Sometimes it could be months before they come up for sale. But of course, when you want to bid to win, you got to play with a poker face. So I left a few of these lots out of the original videos so we could keep them quiet. Until now, these lots have sold at this point. I did win the bid on a few of them, but I didn't take them home because the bids went so low. What I'm going to do right now is show you these lots, tell you what I bid on and won and tell you what they all eventually sold for. Let's start things off with a rare 12 cylinder Audi and a special edition 996 911. All right, out of all the cars, Rich, we could have yeah. taken, I took the 996 911 to the uh, concourse yeah. because it's super comfy and it got us there and back in here. I like this one. This looks like a second gen. It's got the turbo front end. Yeah. But wait, what is this? Is it's this a, a turbo, turbo or? They probably said the front end conversion. It looks really nice. Got those clear headlights. Yeah. Let's see here. This is. The guy wow. just converted. Put pro, uh, polished wheels on it. It's got polished wheels. Those have got really skinny tires. It's 911, yeah. PCA, but it just says 911. So I don't think any of them came from the factory with just 911. I think that's aftermarket. Let's see if uh, first of all, it's got a man. It does have a manual. Okay. That is a very good start. Oh look, power. All right, we're popping the engine here to see what sort of engine it's got. And I can't tell anything from looking at it. Yeah. It does look mint though. It looks mint, this man. Clean. They took good care of this thing. Okay, we're gonna start it up. Look at the, dude, look at the spec on this. All right, this is a later model. It says 911 40 something or other limited edition. Is that got a stick. No, I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. <laughs> Strong as could be, man. It sounds just like mine. This is a strong, strong, much better spec than what I have. Oh boy. Should I trade it out? I think so. Down here, it looks like it says 4.0. I can't even see what that says. So small, limited edition, number 1275. This is a really, really nice spec. I'd trade mine out for this in a heartbeat. Even with a rattle, nothing like engine. Yeah, it's the IMS bearing. Sam, you can't save them all. You can't, but this doesn't look like it needs to be saved. This looks like somebody's car they're just trying to get rid of. Yeah, hey, maybe we should contact... Uh... No, we oh, buy no. from the salvage auction. You get the best deal. Right. <laughs> you nuts? You, you play with that... See, at the auction, you could play with the poker face, right? right? So even though this could be like, let's say, a dealer's car, we've checked it out. I know that this is something that's pretty decently solid as far as I could tell and then we bid, and we're behind a screen, right? They don't see who this guy is. We go back and forth a little bit, and they just hand the title over, man. That's why I like, look, I've bought a few dealer cars, as you've seen. You saw one delivered recently. I did, yeah. And you could get an incredible deal on some of these cars that have, eh, let's say moderate issues or like small issues. So this one for sure is real nice. These are a nightmare to work with, oh, but, but. Dude, but, they look so good. Let's see, I see it from a distance here. Is it in good shape or is it right? It looks decent, man. I mean, the front end hit a little bit, but no airbags went off. This is a, oh, oh, oh I almost just died. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this, man. Look at this big girl. Isn't she a big girl? Rich, let it. me tell you something. I've been talking about this, the small engines that come in this car. Oh my, oh boy. Got the executive, the TVs and the headrests. Ooh, you smell it? Ooh. Does it smell? Oh smell? gosh, it doesn't smell very good at all. That no, flood? That what is that? Flood, yeah. Oh no, don't tell me that. Flood on a 12 cylinder, Rich. Rich, you'd be a brave man. I'll do it, I don't care. Ooh, yeah. It's got that little bit. I mean, it's not. See, there's some stuff you could do to kind of repair things. I like Ooh. this one. But it's got a hit. It's got a hit. Well, yeah, I mean, what do you think? It was just here just because? Just no, but I mean, it's strange because it does have that kind of wet. Yeah, it's all over oh, the dash. Oh Louisiana. no. Louisiana, yeah. See, look, the dash is oh, coming yeah. apart. Yeah. I think this car is dead, dead. Hey, could you imagine if you brought, the, and you're an electrical guy, Rich. I am, I know how to do this stuff. And 
the 12 cylinder it's like that thing must that. that thing must cruise yeah i know it's true but no i'm saying nobody wants it so it gets you a good deal on one rich yeah. the electronics are just done yeah, on this car know, but, but it looks so pretty though it's a big car man it look the interior conditions like really nice look at the door cards the door cards have this like alcantara, alcantara. they got these metal speaker grills stainless trim yeah, yeah, someone was yeah. fishing for some stuff for sure you smell that Smells like mold. Yeah, no, I'm all set. Maybe next time. Now, after doing a little bit of research, I figured out that the 911 you just saw was a special 40th anniversary edition car. These are pretty unique cars with a little bit of a cult following. It's basically like buying a C4S, but I believe without the four part. Anytime you see a four on the back of a 911, it designates that it's an all wheel drive car. This had the power of an S, so about 40 or 50 more horsepower than your base 300 horsepower 996, but it also had the performance pack upgrade, which was super rare to find on any 996 911 that wasn't a turbo model it had wheels that were unique to this car and every single interior upgrade you could imagine including nav from 2004 or 5 which is super old and dated but a cool car nonetheless and i won it for only seven grand which was obviously way too low the seller wanted twenty thousand for it i think is really full price for this car which retail sells between about thirty and forty five thousand dollars with the clean title this one had a salvage title of course but for a car that looked like it was repaired appropriately sounded mechanically strong i think the perfect mark on it would have been thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars all in and it would have been perfect for me because i have a 996 911 it's a little bit older with a few more miles i would have loved to sell mine for around eleven to twelve thousand dollars and take this one on for a little bit more it would have been a great upgrade a cool car a unique car that has a little bit of a history to it with the special edition of course it's been rebuilt and uh, well it didn't happen you can't win them all and that's totally fine because we won another Porsche which we'll be talking about in just a moment but I want to touch on the 12 cylinder Audi as well when I opened the door to that car the smell of mold hit me in the face hard but when I walked around the front and saw the accident damage I was thrown off you know you're so excited in the moment for the prospects of this car selling super cheap in which it did uh, is this actually a flood car maybe someone just dropped some water and it sat in here and it smells moldy like what's going on your brain takes over and you start to make guesses try not to guess as much as possible just pull your phone open go to the auction wherever you're at pull up the auction listing and now you got the best of both worlds you got the technical data on the auction site maybe you have a subscription or you pull up a report if you're really interested on autoauctions.io to get a more extended data report on it and then you figure out okay this car does show two forms of damage front end and flood so I was right, but I started second guessing myself. This car sold for $3,500 the first time it was at salvage auction. Somebody took it from one auction, moved it to another. It's a strategy used by a lot of uh, salvage auction flippers, and they made probably about a grand on it. it. Sold for five grand the second go around. I say they, they made a grand because even though it was 35 to five, there's fees in between. They paid fees here. They had to pay fees to sell it. So I'm guessing they made a cool 900,000 bucks real quick. And somebody got a really messed up 12 cylinder Audi, but hey, there was thousands of dollars worth of parts in this thing. So I think it was a pretty fair value. Now I wanna shift gears to another car that doesn't shift gears at all because it doesn't have a transmission, a Tesla Model X. Sam, I found a Tesla over there, right over there. Do you see it? What color is it? It's white. That Jaguar? No, that, that is not it. The Kia? Uh, nope, it, there's a white Model X beyond that. I know all Teslas look alike to you. Well, they look like these cars for sure and yeah. those cars are older than a tesla so right oh maybe oh are you yeah are you oh hold on a second you know what i think all modern cars right a lot of people say that all modern cars kind of have this similar look yep oh look i see it. it's right see, there. there you go told you it's very obvious right here this is the one that sam but i can see why you'd be confused about that this, well the back end the front end is totally different now rich I tell you, I like the Model 3 a lot. Yes. Never driven but one of these. You, look at this X, man. It's a nice spec. This you have the nice. privilege of owning one of these, Rich. How does that feel? I do. It feels pretty good. Okay. There you go. Hey, that's why it's holding right there. Look at that windshield. It's all cracked off. How There's much several is cracks windshield? in the windshield. How much is one? I don't know, maybe like 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks. That's it? Yeah. Well, that. And I'm saying, guys, I say that's it. Okay, a normal windshield on this right here. Yeah under $100, you get someone to install it, maybe you're talking a couple hundred dollars. If you're paying out of pocket, this, just look how long this spans. It's a huge windshield. It goes to the top it of the car. It goes all the way to the top of the car. So when I hear $1,500 for this, I think that's, if Rich is telling the truth, a decent deal. 
on a Ferrari Lamborghini, you're talking 4,000, 5,000. I don't think it's that much. Case. Maybe I am wrong. I will so, fact check this, and if I'm wrong, I will edit it out of the video. Is that battery? Oh, shit, right here. Push it right there. Right there. Hold yeah. on. Oh. No, it's dead. I'm looking. The white interior, the carbon, it's got a <coughs> rich. Yeah. Are you okay? I, keep, I think I have. Oh, no. No, I hope I don't not. want to say it. I don't no, want to no. say it. I'm not going to say it. Sorry. Obviously, the, this this blue tape right here. But wait. It's exactly. I think the window is just down. Maybe it died. The window couldn't go back up. Hold on. Okay, so wait. This door might have actually been disassembled at a body shop. Yep. Or I mean, the glass is probably out of it, and you can see the trim is all missing, and the glass right here is cracked. Yep. We keep going. Oh, is it the back? Is it the back? A little bit, a little bit. Oh, this is not, not bad. bad. This is not. This is actually. Oh, it's a 75 D. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, boy. There's All right. Wrong Next with car. It. No, no, no. Wait, come back. Okay. This is very similar to what happened to the Tesla that Alex and I had. I say similar. It was hit more from underneath. Yeah. And pushed up probably a little less than this that. This is an easy fix, man. You pull that bad boy out. Uh, I say, I, you say that, Rich. Yeah. Rich and I had an argument over this. I personally would like the idea of pulling this out. But it does have this quarter damage right here. You could pull that. You could pull go, it and repair it. No, you could. Go to a paintless debt repair I don't guy. I think PDR is going to be well, able to do this. I'll tell you one thing but, right now. But the charger is right here. The master charger of the vehicle is right here, and there's a lot of electronics in that lower corner. So that might not be a great thing. See, and that's the sort of stuff that I don't know when it comes to these cars, that right. I look at it. Personally, I'm all about a repair to this, not replacing the quarter, not replacing the floor. But I'm sure a Tesla, they wouldn't have it. And that's ever, why this car's total. Have you ever repaired uh, a vehicle in a, um, a very unique way that you want to talk about, Sam? I don't like like bonding panels, something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, on a Ferrari once. The most unique repair i think i've ever done was on the audi r8 when we put it up on jack stands yep. and we and pulled the car it. using its own like weight, weight on on jack stands yep. i think it worked i i put thousands of miles on the car knock on a uh, tesla here yep but it's been great and uh and i've got a bug eating my ear now this model x actually isn't that bad at all there's really only a little of the rear quarter panel damage right there on that side the interior is super nice it's a white six-seater car uh, the interior looks flawless. There's white and carbon fiber. There's no dings or dents anywhere around the car whatsoever. Uh, only thing is the windshield is cracked, which kind of stinks. This side of the car is almost perfect. The wheels are in great shape. There's no tears or cuts. The car is dead. Doesn't open, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure a jump will get that back going really quickly. And back over here in the rear end, the rear bumper was torn off. Uh, it's a 75D. It has the tow package, the hookup for the, uh, for the rear lighting. Uh, but this thing looks really good. That's the only damage on this car. This would be a super simple fix if you're looking for a Model X. Make sure you check this one out for sure. With a sale price of near $50,000, I think this car sold for way too much money. Uh, now, new, these cars are over $100,000. But I think the main issue with salvage auction Teslas for now are the major unknowns. Not the unknown and how to rebuild them. It's the, well, how do I even say it? The connected car part of Tesla. If you have a Tesla, it is always communicating with the mothership. And the mothership can send it data, it can send it updates, it can tell the car what to do. So I'm not trying to instill any fear. I don't think the Tesla is going to decide to shut down the ability to use your salvage Tesla. But what it has done in the past and could ramp up is shut off the ability to use certain features in a rebuilt or salvage title Tesla. Uh, one of the main features that they've shut off recently is supercharging. And I believe the supercharging aspect of a Tesla is what makes it the best electric car on the road today. So without that feature, you've severely devalued that car. How do you justify $50,000 for a car that needs probably minimum five to $10,000 in refurbishing when you could go to Tesla site, buy a used one for maybe about 20, 30% more and have none of those concerns and a car that's under full factory warranty. Now, some of you might've watched the rebuild series I did with legit street cars and rebuilding a Tesla. I think they're phenomenal cars to rebuild when it comes to the actual process. They're fairly simple, but I'm staying away from them at the salvage auction for the time being, just because of these recent, let's say power grabbing events. Now let's move to a salvage auction bargain that can be found across the country, a very popular car, the BMW. BMW 7 Series. Uh, this one sold, in my opinion, for an incredible deal, had fairly light damage, and well, it was just a really nice car. Look at this. Is this a political ad within oh. this video? Oh, Jeez no. Alright. 
right here, uh, this is nasty kind of. And is, if it's really up high here, see it's all taped down. Yeah, it doesn't seem bad. Same. Salvage auction etiquette, you don't remove tape from cars. That's, that's my uh, thing, but this is probably stuck. Depends how high up. I mean, this looks very high up. You just want to make sure it didn't push any of the, the frame in right here. Like Probably it. not. You wouldn't know unless you really pulled things up and inspected. But let's check out, see if there's any deployed airbags. 95,675 miles. Ooh, look at oh, that interior. Wow, the interior is legit. Wow. That's nice, man. It's got that German car crayon odor that a 10 year old German car gets. But look at the back. This thing man. is like clean as could be this is nice man okay rich another one to add to the watch list this one for sure now this is the 750 so bigger engine um so worse fuel economy better power these are twin turbo i think and are the they? other one is that a 740 oh my gosh wait look at how many miles that 740 has on 253 that's why it's salvaged it ran out of miles well at this point when you get to 253,000 miles on a car like this Rich, oh my, so we see it's sagging. Let's start with that. When you get to 253,000 miles on a 7 Series BMW on the books to an insurance company, it's not worth a lot. Ooh, oh, soft, soft close, close. close. Nice. Do that again. Nice. Wow. Okay, 253,000 miles. So you could see the interior on this one, a little bit more basic. It's got that, that Pacific Breeze air freshener <laughs> scent yeah. to it. This was probably a taxi of some sort, maybe uh, a nicer Uber. And again, it's got one of these kind of like light front end collisions. I guess the kicker on this is the super high miles, 253,000. So if you had to pick between the two, you've got the 740, better gas mileage, easier to maintain, or you got the 750, a slightly worse damage, half, less than half the amount of miles. Uh, which one do you pick, 740 or 750? Let me know in the comment section below, personally, these miles to me, they could be a gift or a curse. You know, this car could be very well maintained, but the other one had the better interior color. Looked like it had the better interior options. So I'm gonna go with the 750. And as a matter of fact, I wanna try and start it up and see if it runs because this is a car that I'm seriously considering and I'll probably put on my watch list. So the electronics seem to work just fine in it. Foot on the brake, starts right up. Sounds very good. We do have an engine light on and uh, well, nothing really else but low gas. Low battery, that can be a cause of a whole slew of lights. This car is a really, really nice place to be. I imagine it won't sell for a ton given that it's a, again, a seven series with near 100,000 miles. Now this BMW sold for $3,650. Let's just say four grand with all the auction fees included. Retail, I believe this car would be about thirteen dollars to $15,000 with the clean title. So if you play your cards right and there's no hidden damage really in the lower areas of the front end, I think you could fix this car for around $6,000 all in. You'd have a very comfortable, technologically advanced for the price daily driving BMW 7 Series with a 4.4 liter twin turbo, which is a very fast engine, but these early iterations like found in this one are somewhat mechanically needy. So you're gonna to wanna to budget a little bit more cash for parts. If you do the labor yourself though, it could be a very rewarding car to drive and to own. And hey, it looked pretty darn clean, so there's a chance that it could have been serviced at the dealership before it was total. Now the last car I wanna share with you is the one that I really wanted to take home. I didn't particularly want the car, it was just an obvious car to have for a flip. There was five figures worth of money laying on the table in this car and well, I let it go over about a thousand dollars. It's a Porsche Cayman S that was basically brand new. Oh, check this out. What's wrong with this? Again, this is like one of these cars you look at from the angle and you're like, oh, what's wrong with it? It's at a weird angle. And then, you know, the whole rear end is just destroyed. But Rich, so far, uh, I kind of like it. This is one of those strange, uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing's wrong with this car. This is really, really weird. Really weird. It's perfect. Okay, how about inside? What's the first thing you under see? Undercarriage, undercarriage, gotta be undercarriage. No. You see nothing? It's perfect, man. I mean, just from the slight glimpse I can get, 
It's nothing. I don't see anything wrong. The tires even look like they got a ton of tread on them. This looks like a... It says it had like, what, 2,000 miles. It probably smells like cat pee on the inside or something. <sighs> see, if it's not undercarriage, it's flood, right? Yeah, probably smells. So let's see. No forks. Of course, on a Porsche, you never want to do that. Let's open this up. All right, smell that interior, baby. Rich, it smells like a brand new car. It does? I'm not kidding. You take a seat, man. Let me hold that. Take hold a seat, on. Man. I think I can fit. I want to see if I can see you. Can I see Sam so, in this car? Should I had a first-gen Cayman. Yeah? And, uh... How do you fit in it? Decent? This one's way roomier than the first-gen. But wait, the, my head I is hitting the, the headline. What? I see the issue. There you go. Why is headliner? Drooping? What is this, a 1994 Camry? Look, 2,924 miles. There's nothing powering on on the dashboard. Right. But that seems odd for the headliner to be just dragging like that. On a 2,000-mile... What is this? Hold on. We're going to take a quick two second break to pull this up online and see why it's here. And then we're going to come right back. And now it's telling me that it's normal scratches and dents, salvage title, mm -hmm. no keys. That should be easy though, right? You just go to Joanne Fabric or Michaels. For no keys? Right, no, for the headliner. <laughs> and, then, and then when you're at Michaels, you could stop by the Porsche okay. dealership. There you go. Okay. Yeah, and get the keys. Yeah. Dude, this it would be is, cool if Joanne Fabric had two dude, Let me see this. Yeah. I mean, this is the new Porsche, right? Everything about it, it doesn't have a ton of options, but it is an S. It's got the timer clock there. This is a sweet ride that really, it's basically a new car without the keys. Again, you get super excited about these cars. And even though I did the right thing by pulling up an auto auctions listing, I was just like too excited. I glanced at it very quick. Obviously, look, it says runs and drives, engine starts and has keys. But the big thing I look at is two things here. First of all, who's the seller type? It's the insurance company. That's a good thing. But two years ago, this lot was added at the salvage auction. That's probably why the headliner is, is sunken at this point. It's been sitting out in the Florida sun for two years now. But right here, the original listing says it runs and drives, the engine starts, but it doesn't have the keys. This must have just been mismarked because how in the heck would they get it to run and drive and start without the keys? So that's just obviously a typo, but look at the original photos. Uh, they definitely were not taken at a salvage auction lot. First photo, you've got this Ford Explorer in the background with fender trim missing. And if you go here, look, there's a Maserati clearly right here. There's a Chrysler Crossfire that looks like it's been smashed. My guess is this thing is at a body shop. If you look at the interior, this is the rear trunk trim. This is not where this uh, plastic trim piece sits. And you look, some stuff is kind of thrown around back there. One of the pieces of maybe pillar trim. There's also a box in this first photo again. You see that box? The boxes in the interior are indicative of new parts ordered from a dealership. If I had to give my best guess as to what is going on here, this car was involved in some very minor accident, was sent to the body shop to get repaired. The insurance company paid for the repairs. Either the owner was not satisfied with the repairs or they took so long there was a conflict between the owner and the insurance company. And sometimes when conflicts escalate, there are legal implications. And anytime there's a legal battle, well, those ownership documents, the title of this car, will get held up until all of this is cleared. Remember that dusty old I-8 that's been sitting at the auction at least two years now? Well, I don't know all of this for fact about this Porsche nor the I-8, uh, this is stuff that I've heard of in the past, and it's what makes the most sense here. So this is my best educated guess as to why this Porsche is sitting here in this sort of condition at the salvage auction. It's strange situations like these that can provide for incredible opportunities, though. Retail with a clean title, I believe this Cayman S was worth about sixty-two dollars to $63,000. I won the bid on this car for $29,500. So at about 50% of its retail costs, let's say $31,000 all in, I was sitting in a good place to potentially make, let's say like $10,000 plus on it. I think if you could prove to the end user of this carb that it was never in any sort of accident or flood or anything that compromised its body or mechanics, someone would be willing to buy the car at just a 10 or 15% discount. Now after winning the car, the insurance company countered me at $33,500 in which I declined. I figured that we were close enough and uh, well, they just release it. They did it. They relisted the car. I bid again, figuring I'll just win it again. And usually what happens is the insurance company will take a few thousand dollars off each time and I'll, they'll get closer to my number and I'll take it home. Well, no, someone outbid me and won the car around $32,000. Shortly after that auction, the car was marked sold. So I knew the person that outbid me was the winner and I sucked it up. That was a tough one to lose, however, uh, it's during an uh, interesting time in everyone's life, 
and I figured if I was going to be buying a car, you're taking a, a pretty substantial risk. There's economic impacts to what's going on right now, and you gotta be super conservative. Maybe bidding on a Porsche isn't a super conservative action, but also there's opportunities in a market like this, and well, if they're available, you might wanna take them. So guys, let me know if you enjoyed this video format and enjoyed finding out what all these cars sold for. If you did, definitely be sure to leave this video a like. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, where you'll see projects like what's sitting behind me before anything goes live here on YouTube, go right here, click the link in the description box below. I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today and I'll catch you very soon.